Who do you believe is the smartest person alive? Perhaps it's one of these. Perhaps you're in the room saying, why are there only men on the screen? So perhaps you think it's one of these. Do you know Marilyn Vos Savant? She might actually be the smartest person alive. She has a recorded IQ of 228. She's now in her 70s. This was the only photo I could find. But what does it mean to be the smartest person alive is perhaps a better question that you could have asked me. Because I think, what about you? What if you're the smartest person alive? How would that feel? What would you do? Are you the smartest person alive? Could you be the smartest person alive? 1264, this gentleman, Vincent, spent 29 years writing a book. That book was actually 80 books, and it was a collection of all the books that he could find in the world, and he wrote that for his king, because his king wanted to know everything that there was to know. 500 years later, the encyclopedia people started writing encyclopedias, and as you can see, it's about the same size. It's half the number of books, but many more words, half a million topics condensed into a set of books. And these were sold all around the world to help people know everything that could be known. A few hundred years later, and actually almost still known today, 1924, this guy died, also from a religious background, this was the last guy to know everything. And as you can see, he wrote a lot. And when I say he wrote about everything, I couldn't even memorize the list of things he wrote about. It included, deep breath, anthropology, folklore, children's stories, geology, topography, painting, ancient and modern history, plausibility of miracles, the minutia of English salt mining industry, the biographies of Napoleon I and the Caesars, the histories of Germany, Ireland, North and South Wales, the Rhine and the Pyrenees, the theological treatise on the problem of evil, and a very scholarly book about werewolves. Yes, werewolves. Uh, nobody knows how he got so much knowledge about so many different things to be able to write as an authority about these things. Sabina was declared the last man who knew everything. Was he the smartest person alive? Do these people compete with the Einsteins of the world? Do you? What was interesting is all of these things that you just saw happened before the internet. No mobile phones, no connectivity, no easy way to get data around the world, no way to check that that data is correct all around the world. And I think you know what comes next. The internet was born, and I don't think there's anybody in the room who needs an introduction to Wikipedia. In the English language alone, there is half a million, sorry, five million pages of content. That's more than 11 times the written encyclopedias which stopped being published 10 years ago. And of course, that content is updated daily, is fact-checked by many people, and travels all around the world via the internet. So why I'm here is not to talk about next nature, but to talk about you because I think you are already part of the next nature, and I want you to start thinking the unthinkable, because you can know the unknowable, and if you combine those two together, you can do the impossible. Does that feel like a challenge you're up for? I hope so. I was one of those people that is called a zenial. I'm neither a Generation X or a millennial like you. I sit right on the edge. And that means I can remember the time before the internet. So I actually had a set of those books in my house. I know that makes me old, it's fine. And in that time, I've seen huge shift, not only around technology and communication, but about the way we live in this world. For me, it's no longer okay that we have bad companies destroying the people and the planet in order to make money. And we have to then offset that with good companies who do nothing but do good in order to make better for what these guys have done. I don't think that's necessary anymore. I think that we can do better. And I think that people like you are the people who are going to do better. 
despite the fact you can read statistics that show humankind is doing fantastically. You can look at birth rates, you can look at death rates, you can look at the uh, longevity of humans, the number of uh, um, illnesses and diseases that are disappearing off the face of the planet. Humankind has never been better. But we still have a lot of problems to solve. I hope you're aware of these, and if you're not, please go home and research them. Um, the Global Goals of Sustainable Development, these were set up by the uh, UN a few years ago, 17 different goals, to solve the biggest challenges that humankind faces on this planet. You've read them already, basic things like hunger and poverty, cleaning the ocean, things that, you know, I believe everybody in this room has seen something on the screen and they think, yeah, that's something that should be fixed. But how do we fix those? How do we fix those by the date of 2030, which is when the UN has suggested they need to be resolved or we face imminent danger? Well, the good news is, and I believe, there is no rocket science behind this, so uh, sorry to Elon Musk, he's doing a great job, but you don't have to be a rocket scientist to fix some of these problems. These are the things we need, it's quite simple. Both technology and humans together, you saw a quote in the previous talk by Kevin Kelly, the technology needs us just as much as we want the technology. We're going to need access to all of the information in the world. We're going to need the ability to process that information, right? Remember back to Vincent, it took him 29 years to gather and rewrite all that information. And that was nothing compared to what we have today. We have to have the capability of taking that information that, that just factual data and turning into knowledge that's something that we can do with. And of course, you have to have the desire to use that knowledge for good and not for bad. So let's go through those a little bit. All of the data in the world, well luckily we have that, right? We're capturing it now. All of the text messages you send, all of the information you create on the internet, all of the Wikipedia, all of the stuff that we create in our daily lives is being captured and stored. All the movements that we make are being captured by our cell phones. We have more data now than ever before. In fact, in 2017 alone, humans made more data in one year than the previous 5,000 years. Think about that for a second. 5,000 years from 3,000 BC until 2016. And then in 2017, we made just as much. And by 2019, we will make just as much again. We are now on an exponential curve of creating more data than we know what to do with. Now, that's only a problem if we don't know what to do with it. But the good news is machine learning and artificial intelligence, things that when I was at your age, were just a dream, are now becoming reality. We have access to all the computing power we need to do stuff with that data. So we have all of that data being stored. Think of that as an extension of your memory. We have the machine learning, the artificial intelligence, and various other technologies that you can use as an extension of your brain as computing power. And then we've got the super connectivity that the internet is giving us. And perhaps you might find this one a little bit scary, but I think we're all pretty close already, and that is brain-machine interfaces. Now, for most of you, you're probably stuck with a mobile phone in your hand most of the day, the same as I am. Imagine when that telephone disappears and we can do it straight from our brain to the internet. So again, we've got all of the data in the world, we've got all of the computing power in the world, and we've got all of the people connected in one system. I don't know about you, but that sounds like a great opportunity to, go, to do some really good things. Because the last piece of the puzzle is you, is the humanness. Remember, the technology can't solve things for us. You can't take out your telephone and ask it to solve world hunger. It's not possible. And so with the humankind involved in this collection of tools and technology, with the desire and the will to do good, I think that makes you some of the best and smartest and superhumans that could ever have possibly lived. The only question is, now that you know this, what are you going to do with that? So I again ask you, who is the smartest person in the world? Is it those people you saw earlier? Or is it you with access to all of the technology that we have out there 
And your motivation to hopefully use that for good things. No pressure.